Hello, and welcome back to one of our mini training sessions on Workbooks CRM. And in this one, we're going to cover mailing lists in Workbooks, the mailing list feature in Workbooks. So to kick things off, I want to say that your mailing list strategy there is absolutely fundamental to getting the best results from email marketing. It's the start, really, of any email marketing process. And too often, um, present company accepted. Uh, businesses fall into the trap of blasting out generic emails, email campaigns to their entire base without any thought of segmenting and targeting that, that process. But we all know how quickly emails can get ignored and put into junk and identified as spam because they're not, they're not directly relevant to the recipient. They're not targeted too well. And in fact, studies have shown that email open rates can be as much as 14% higher when the message is properly targeted at that recipient. That's where smart mailing lists come in and become a game changer for you by, by tapping into the depths of your valuable CRM data. If you imagine you've been using workbooks for a number of years now, how valuable is that information that you've got against companies, contacts within the companies, different ways of profiling them and categorizing them. Uh, it's, it's immense. And, uh, you, you know, you, 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 could, you could then slice and dice your data on, on anything uh, using Workbook Stream, location, industry, job title, or any other related information to that, to that person record. So reaching the right person, reaching the, the right people with the right message all the time at the right and at the right time is email marketing 101 and CRM system like workbooks do give you the power to do exactly that through through dynamic mailing lists that could automatically keep themselves up to date as you add new contacts meeting your criteria um, that you've set as you add them to your system. So hello, my name is Tim Wilmot and I'm joined by my colleague Stuart Lawrence and Hind and our company with the systems, we're a leading independent CRM solutions provider of systems like Workbooks, and we help out organizations use simple solutions to improve their sales, marketing, and customer service productivity. So thanks, those of you joining us live for this session, our regular series of short presentations focusing on different Workbooks topics. And as I say, this one is gonna cover mailing lists. Now, the audio part of this call is one way only. You've got a question, please pop that into the question section on your meeting control panel, those of you watching live, and we'll do our best to answer those after we've been through many lists. So let me now hand over to my colleague, Stuart, and he'll take us through the rest of the presentation. What is a mailing list? Uh, in, its in its simplest form, it's just that. It's, it's just a list. Uh, it's a way of grouping people or leads together so that you can contact them. Uh, this list can be called on now or at any time at, in the future. You'll also notice that I said contact, not just email. Uh, it is possible to use this list to create, for example, um, a call sheet, but that's for later. Today, we're gonna be looking at uh, building an email list. Now, there are several ways you can do it. You could build it manually. You could build it from a report, how workbooks call this dynamic, or you could copy one you've already used. I'm gonna look at dynamic list first to show you how these are created as they're one of the easiest to create, as in most cases, the report that drives this will already exist. And Tim mentioned in his intro using the data in workbooks. And the best way with this is to use reports. So I know in my system here, I've got a leads report and it's to do with leads with no activities. And I wanna get things moving and arrange an email to be sent to all the leads in that report. And here's how easy this is. So it's gonna be a new mailing list. So I just click on new, I give it a name. I'm gonna give it a hopefully a suitable name. Um, let's put the month in so it makes sense. And once that's in, I click on dynamic mailing list and the next window opens and straight away the system is asking what report is driving this. 
Now there's probably lots in here and it would take a while to find them, but the beauty of workbooks is, as I start typing the name of the, the report, it will filter the other things out for me Ooh, when I learn to spell. So hopefully, leaves with no activities. There it is. And it also offers me the different views in the report. Don't need to go into that in too much detail. I know that it's going to be the, the details tab of this report. And the system just asks, where are the people in this report? And they're in the main column. And as daft as that sounds, that's it. I just click add members. And there's the mailing list built. 69 members built from one report. And I can now complete the sort of the extra steps in this mailing list if I need to. I'll go th through this as best as I can, keep, keep it really simple. Because this might be a workbooks um, mail shot or campaign, it gives you an option to use a preference center. Now the preference center is uh, a way to manage or the, for the recipient to manage the email. It might be as something they're not really interested in. And so you give them the option to sort of say, I don't want this newsletter, I don't want this um, particular product. And what happens is when they click the option to uh, unsubscribe, they'll be taken to a landing page that's provided by, by workbooks. You don't have to host this. And it sort of looks like, I can actually give you an example of what it looks like. This is the out of the box, as they call it. And you see that this is just a, a rough idea of what it looks like. And then the customer can untick the option they want or worst case scenario, untick from all of them. You click on update subscriptions and that information is fed straight back into workbooks against that record. And that's just based on ticking that box. The second option, auto refresh. So this is slightly different. At the moment, there's only sort of 69 members in this mailing list. Tomorrow, there may be 70 or 68, depending on whether a lead is created or someone responds to one of them, as mentioned. It's a report, so it's live. And this would update the report. So you want to do that, or do you want to do that with this mailing list? If you do, you tick the option to auto refresh. Then you can tell the system when to refresh. You may want to do this if you've got a mailing going out at 10 o'clock, you may want to make sure that this refreshes at nine o'clock in the morning so the list is absolutely up to date and you're emailing the right people. Now, this is a one-off email. I don't need to auto refresh. I can ignore that one. The last option is synchronized. Now, if you're using a mailing platform uh, such, as, such as Gator Mail, I can just tell the system, look, just add these members from this mailing list into my Gator Mail because I'll do the marketing from there and the results will be fed back into workbooks for me. I don't need to do anything further in workbooks. It all be taken care of. But again, I can ignore that one. So that, here's the list. It's ready to go. So what? So let's sort of think about the other things I can do. I could if I wanted to. Uh, add the contacts from another report and include them in this mailing. Once I've built this, I click on reports, add report, and I'll be taken back to that page where I can put in another report. I can click on members and I can add extra members. So not only from the report, I can say add people, organizations, add extra sales leads, maybe some that have been responded to, but not in a particular time. Add members from a report. We saw that one as a separate option for that. Add members from another mailing list or even add members from another campaign can all be driven into this mailing list. One of the things that I mentioned right at the start was I can even tell the system, forget emails. Can you create a phone call list for me? So I can tell this uh, bulk action to make phone calls for one person or a group of people to contact these people on this list to get them dealt with. It's a, a little bit basic, it's not perfect, and we have another way it's a bit cleaner. We can see that this list is not just for emails. So what else happens with this? If we go back to the email scenario, what happens when I've sent the email? I've, so I've sent, the, so I've sent it, I've waited a day or two, how's it done? 
I can click on statistics and I get feedback from this mailing list. Again, referring right back to Tim with the data. How was it sent? Uh, who was it sent to? Did they open it? Did, did they unsubscribe? And this is fed back into the mailing list itself. So you can test the results. Of course, each person that gets the email in this mailing will also have their record updated so that they can, you'll show that they were a member of that mailing list and you'll get their feedback. Did they click anything? Did they open it? Okay, so that's dynamic. What about another simple one? Let's have a look at this empty one. Same thing as before. I'll call this one new empty list. Not the best description, I'm afraid. And it sort of looks like the first one, but unlike the information coming in from the report, it's now empty for me to add from wherever I want. And the reason they offer you this is it could just be a placeholder for a forthcoming campaign and you just want it ready. Then as the report is built, you can come back to here and add a report to it, which would add the members. You may have a new import that's taking place later today so there aren't even the people in the system ready to be added. But when they are, they can be added into this from a report or from a from the list, and you can build it as you go. So once you're ready, that's it. The mailing list is there. And remember, it's, it's, it's just a list until you decide to use it. So dynamic, empty, it's all ready. And it's one of the nicest and easiest sort of features to use. And I'll give it back to you, Tim. Thanks very much, Stuart. And uh, we've, we've covered quite a lot of ground there, haven't we? Uh, beyond just basic list creation, we've covered the preference center. We've touched on bulk actions, different ways of using that list, your mailing list. And when you're getting through that mailing activity, the stats coming back into your workbook system so you can fine tune your uh, future mailing activities. Right, um, let's just see if we've got any questions on the mailing list feature, or indeed anything to do with marketing, with workbooks. You just uh, pop that question in there. Uh, just while you're thinking of any question, a brief mention again of Wizard Systems, long-term, long-standing provider of CRM solutions, including workbooks. And we provide any kind of service around workbooks, the implementation, training, and ongoing support to help you get the most out of uh, your investment. Right, uh, I think there's a couple of questions from Jack. Uh, first question, how do dynamic mailing lists in workbooks handle new records or data changes? Oh, good question. That leads back to using the report in the first place. So the report drives the mailing list. And think of the report like a really clever filter. Uh, the criteria in the report term, it determines who appears in the report. And if they're in the report, if the auto refresh is on, they'll be added to the mailing list. So, yes, a re report, report driven controls what ends up in the mailing list. OK, and second question from Jack. Can mailing lists be shared between marketing and sales teams in workbooks. Yeah, I mean, of course, you've got different groups of users in workbooks, different privileges, different uh, different angle on CRM. So, yeah, how can these lists be shared between different teams? Good question. I, I didn't show that in the uh, in the demo. But when you create the report, the mailing list, and you open it for the first time, and you see all those options we went through, the preference center and the auto refresh. Again, with workbooks, it's the padlock icon. And if you click on the padlock, if you have access to the padlock, when you click on it, it will tell you who the owner of that mailing list is and who else can see it and modify it. And you can add um, groups or departments or even individual users. So it might be just you might be sharing it with just one colleague. And you can say that I'm the owner and I'm sharing it with you. And then just the two of you can access it, update it, edit it, and work with it. Okay, and a, and a kind of related question from Lynette. The CEO has groups of people that he may want to contact. Is it possible on the 
contact page to be able to set up and then select a group from a drop down list to email shot that group. Yes, it sounds like would be again, we'd be looking at a report. I think the best way to do that would be a report because then you can have different tabs in the report. You saw basically I picked mine and it was just called details, but you can have different um, tabs in a report and then you select the report and then in the mail list you say I want to use this report but the contents of this tab this section and just this criteria that's probably the easiest and cleanest way to do that yeah it's, it's quite common isn't it the the people at the top of the organization having their, their sort of own out their own sort of private lists um, where they may want to send out uh, some sort of personal email from the from the person at the top so uh, yeah good good question uh, Lynette if um if if you need any further clarification, just email Stuart or myself on that. We'll come back to you. Uh, right. I don't think there's any more questions, Stuart. So I will wrap things up by uh, confirming that uh, we're on the 7.2 workbooks as of May 2024. Uh, we've got a one day mastering workbooks course, really advanced stuff in a couple of weeks time at our Bristol location. Please contact us for details on that and the agenda. And if you've got any topics for future Workbooks 101s, Workbooks Wednesdays, we, we kind of flip between the two um, definitions of these online events. Uh, please drop us a line. Uh, we'd be happy to consider that. something that would be interesting to lots of Workbooks CRM users out there. So thanks very much indeed, those of you uh, watching live, sticking through to the end, and we will catch up with you soon on another Workbooks topic. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye.